Hello again Strokwap, today I'm bringing you another Warhammer Chaosbane video and this is a version 2.0 of my video from um, back in December 2019 that was called uh, Bragi Crit Monster Slayer build. So this is Bragi Crit Monster Slayer build 2.0, and it is uh, updated take on the build that centers around stacking uh, counterattack damage and getting Fighting Spirit, the passive god skill, to give us extra crit damage based on this counter attack damage. It can do Chaos 9 and it can even do Chaos 10. Of course Chaos 10 takes too long to, to be worth farming. Chaos 8 and 9 are much better and the faster you complete maps the more enemies you kill and the, the more chances of uh, good wood. Uh, talking about elite enemies, chests, I think it's better to take this to Chaos 9. If you can't run Chaos 9 fast enough, run Chaos 7, 8, whatever, until you gear up. Good build, uh, very fun, very strong, especially now with the changes uh, that the Forges update uh, added. Uh, we have padded armor that gives us extra 40% cooldown reduction up to 40% cooldown reduction. It's 0.4% per stack up to 100 stacks so this gives us extra survivability so I sacrificed some damage uh, and I sacrificed duration of the rage but it still uh, lasts for long enough and we can still uh, keep 20 rage stacks uh, while in combat we can still have dualist chain reaction for up to 400 extra crit damage but that damage reduction definitely helps the build be a bit more um, tanky at the higher difficulties now another good change I want to mention uh, about this build is every single piece of equipment got its counterattack damage boosted. So the rows on an axe for example could go up to 1000, now they can go up to 1600. Rings uh, now get uh, twice as much counterattack roughly, uh, armors get uh, roughly twice the counterattack, uh, so amazing uh, for this build. You can get much much stronger than you could before if you farm new versions of your old counter-attack items. Of course you need to get new versions because the old ones did not get updated with the new counter-attack values. I hope you enjoyed the build, now let's show you some info about the skills. The skills I've decided to choose for this build are like this where uh, my number two is something that is flexible. So for the number two there's two options. One of them would be call to out superior when you're using avenging charge superior. The other one would be blood of the mountain superior when using avenging charge superior. And uh, the third combination would be avenging charge basic version with uh, call to out mastered. I've uh, included footage with uh, all of those throughout uh, this video so you would be seeing uh, at least one run of this combo, one run of this combo and uh, and multiple runs with uh, this combo. I think right now this combo is super strong and uh, call to out probably is only good uh, if you really want that extra crit damage and damage and if you're using the Grimnir set. With the Grimnir set you're getting uh, the heroic version of the skill which gives you 100% crit damage, 100% damage and 20% movement speed. So with the Grimnir set you would be looking at uh, this one combined with Avenging Charge Superior and with uh, Last Bastion Superior. Don't look at those here, those are my farming skills on my Grimnir set. So. Uh, Keep in mind uh, this is the, the setup for pushing uh, when it comes to undefeated or uh, with uh, the Kazaka Karak set or with the Grimnir set. So th these are the passives. Let's go through the skills quickly. Axtro, basic, uh, Strike of the Anvil mastered. If you're using uh, Kazaka Karak it's Strike of the Anvil heroic uh, and uh, this last bastion would be superior. And of course here as I said there's multiple options. Um, then we have Ancestor's Gift, we have uh, as I said here already mentioned options for those. Uh, 
I strongly suggest if you have trouble surviving both of the mountains superior, avenging charge superior. Why do I like superior? Because it leaves a fire trail and this fire trail can proc certain things uh, like uh, resetting your cooldown or reducing your cooldowns on crit from fiery ring of Tori. Um, then last bastion, either heroic or the superior version if you're not using this set. Now here the most important thing, the bread and butter of this build, fighting spirit mastered. This is uh, what gives us crit damage based on how much counter attack damage we've got and more about counter attack damage uh, sources uh, during the gear segment. Hero of the Desert, it's a great all-rounder skill. It's optional and if you don't have the DLC that uh, that is additional cost, uh, the Tom King's DLC which is a paid DLC, if you don't have it, instead of that one, uh, my suggestion would be Eternal Grudge Superior. Uh, this one is great because it gives you damage, it gives you damage reduction and a little bit of crit damage, counter attack damage and even HP. Great all-rounder skill and this, this padded armor was not in my first version of this build from December and with that uh, it's great for the survivability of any build on any class. It's up to 100 stacks of 0.4 resulting in a total of 40% uh, damage reduction. Pretty amazing if you ask me. Uh, that's why I decided to get rid of um, Eternal Grudge Superior and use this one. Sacrificing some damage but for the price of a lot of survivability. It's up to you whether you want it. An option would be as I said Eternal Grudge Superior. If you're already replacing this with Eternal Grudge Superior in this stat you can, you can think of something else to add. There are a few choices uh, such as uh, maybe Deep Gashes but um, I'd still, I'd still probably not take deep gushes, but it's up to you. So Duelist Chain Reaction is a must have, then you have Dead Wall, I, I'm gonna show you in a moment where to get Duelist Chain Reaction. Dead Wall mastered uh, amazing synergy with a ring we're using. <laughs> Basically, we are stunning an enemy, then the enemy starts bleeding, and then bleeding enemies take more damage. Damage increases based on the number of nearby bleeding enemies. And this is why in the gear segment I'm gonna mention why I like using Ring of Resonance. Because um, it lets us stun when we're using, for example, uh, Last Bastion or when we're using uh, Strike of the Anvil, the main source of damage. So th those are skills with cooldown. Those are god skills, they're, they still have cooldown but they're considered god skills and not skills so they don't trigger this uh, stunning explosion. Do you see that white wave? Um, so it does a little bit of damage and stuns and uh, helps trigger stuff. Now let's show you where you can get uh, Duelist Chain Reaction. Over here. So you go to of course the, the rank that you're pushing. Uh, as I said you're probably starting from rank 10 then moving on to rank 19 and so on. So you get Duelist Chain Reaction all the way here. If you're having trouble reaching it straight, straight uh, from the get-go, you might want to get this uh, um, Corruption Resistance and this Corruption Resistance. If this is not enough, get this and this Corruption Resistance and that's the maximum you can get 60% and then you go here and grab this. Then for the old Ring of Resonance, you need to go all the way here. And I strongly suggest if it's your first run, Grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this, get do this chain reaction and then start pushing all the way to old ring of resonance. So you would probably be doing it on rank 10 and key thing to remember is uh, once you reach this stage and clear it, do not collect this on rank 10. Switch back to rank 1, collect it on rank 1, then go to rank 2, collect it on rank 2 and go up the ranks uh, increasing it by 1 because if you collect this on rank 10 then you would not be able to collect the other 9 uh, rings that are from 1 to 9. It's how the way, uh, it's how the game works. I've not tried it since the, the Forges update, but back in the previous update, uh, Tomb Kings, um, that's how it was. If I were to collect that on rank 10, I'm losing 9 versions. The same goes if you're at rank 19 right now. Push, uh, push over here, complete this, then switch back to the lowest uncollected one and, and start collecting all the way up. This might have been a little bit of a... Uh, off topic but I think it's uh, unneeded information. Uh, so that was it for the skills and passives. Let me quickly go through the legendary rank skills. 
I'm a big fan of Legendary Crushing and Reinforcement and since this build uh, is spamming cooldown stuff I think Legendary Reinforcement uh, goes much better. So what you would be working towards is getting 25, 30, 35% on this one and maxing the power on this one. Once this is done you might m move into um, investing into maxing uh, Legendary Crushing. Uh, with 25-30% chance. Once this is done you can start working toward uh, Legendary Endurance. Eventually if you le reach level Legend uh, 1200 you would have maxed out this 100-100-100-100 on both uh, chance and power. 6 uh, times 200 that's kind of how it is. But prioritize Legendary Reinforcement or Crushing. But my, my suggestion is Reinforcement. Max this one out and once you get like level 150, 60, 70 you can start moving uh, into another one. So now let's uh, talk about uh, the god skills. For the god skills I am uh, using the exact same stuff uh, that I was using in the first version back in the 19th of December when I uploaded Crit Monster uh, version 1 but uh, I'm using one of the alternative setups because I need cooldown reduction I will quickly show you multiple versions uh, uh, that you might want to consider first of all most importantly you want on the basic god skill 3 to do this and uh, Keep in mind, if you want to be using this build, you need to have the God, the God Skills DLC. Uh, it is a paid DLC, but it's also included in the Season Pass, and the Season Pass by itself is included in the Magnus Edition if you have it. So you need this Ancestor's Gift, then you move on to this tree, and the most important part of this build is uh, this Fighting Spirit, the Bread and Butter. On the way to Fighting Spirit we are picking Bird of the Mountain Superior, so that's why this build doesn't require much to, to be changed if you don't want to be using Code to Out and you want to be using Bird of the Mountain Superior. And this one is super important. So the three important things are Ancestor's Gift, Fighting Spirit uh, Mastered and uh, this 50% counter attack damage. After this everything else is optional and flavor. Uh, depending on what your build needs. Do you need more cooldown reduction? Then don't take this one and don't take this one. I, I would suggest the skeleton. This would be the skeleton. In my opinion after this everything is flavor. So if you have a lot of cooldown reduction you can do this. 1-2 points but you're losing 5 cooldown reduction and 1-2-3 points for more counter attack damage again losing cooldown reduction. Of course uh, I decided to go over here, so this is 5% uh, cooldown reduction you can get with 2 points invested. Then if you want extra 3% there's 2 points you can invest here. But if you like me need a lot more cooldown reduction because your gear doesn't have it then you can spend another 1, 2, 3, 4 points here and then 1, 2, 3, 4 points here. And that's that's a lot of cooldown reduction. If I need a little bit more I can go over here and spend 2 points and get 3% cooldown reduction but then I won't be able to get as much crit damage because I've got only 3 points left and I can do 1, 2, 3 or I can do 1, 2 and maybe a little bit of energy. That's one option. Now since uh, I do not need that cooldown reduction here. I prefer to do it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we've got 30 crit damage and 40 crit damage here and another 30. So that's like a whole 100 crit damage for those uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Totally worth it. Again, if you don't need that much cooldown reduction, you maybe want to go that route. Uh, there's few options. First of all, you could probably try and go all the way here but you won't be able to. Not like this. But you're still getting 30% uh, crit damage on the way with another 30 and another 30 so that's another 90%. Another option would be to do it like this and to get uh, that 3%. But instead of doing it like this you can also do it like this. 
so it's optional again a lot of flavor a lot of stuff that you can do and there's also five percent cooldown reduction you can get here uh, if you want it uh, but I still think if you want cooldown reduction it's better to just invest, uh, invest over here on the way you're getting uh, some random stuff and it's good so I think uh, you've got a lot of options it is a flexible build uh, you can even try and make a build uh, um, that doesn't use uh, that doesn't use this counter-attack damage and stops with this counter-attack damage here but I would strongly suggest against it but this is an option if you want it uh, you have it so this 40 crit damage look at that I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate uh, with fighting spirit I'm gonna quickly demonstrate uh, why I don't suggest uh, doing it the way it was done uh, right now because you're losing crit damage so look at that now it's 889 889 but if I were to remove this 40% crit damage and get this counter attack damage look at that we got to a lot more than 40 so we got like 50 definitely better and uh, this this becomes even better when you consider adding rage into the mix and because uh, you have a higher base counter attack damage and with that base um, you just keep adding on top of it with the rage and the rage with the grudge holder uh, is giving you up to 10,000 extra counter attack damage which uh, in turn uh, gets much much uh, stacked up so the skills I was using uh, once again were those when recording uh, the footage for the video but you might wanna change it up I hope this really helps you realize uh, what's better and what isn't if you want to make a choice whether you wanna spend two points here or spend three points here I think this 10% damage would be stronger than the 20% counter attack damage so keep that in mind if you're uh, if you're trying to scale it uh, to see which one weights more I think this one ends up giving you more damage and more DPS than this one so, so if you have to decide uh, if you have five cooldown reduction that you can sacrifice but you want to get uh, DPS get this don't get this if you can get both of them if you have more cooldown reduction of course that's fine this ended up being longer than I intended but uh, I hope it really helped you um, regarding the passives uh, the god skills now let's move on to the gear segment and the gameplay segment so gear wise uh, the build works with uh, any set so it can be undefeated it can be Grimnir's Herald it can be champion of Karaza Karak and it can be Avenger I strongly suggest uh, not using it with the Avenger but it's fine there's ways to to make it work with the Avenger set um, but uh, my suggestion would be Champion of Karaza Karak, Grimnir or Undefeated and Undefeated is the one that's the most DPS-y but uh, the Grimnir one is also super fun because with the Grimnir one you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of damage uh, that comes from the AoE aura around you and you can get uh, good, uh, good damage uh, increase from the Koto Old Heroic I still prefer playing the, the undefeated set when pushing and the Grimnir set when doing invasions, so uh, much easier content. So the pieces you need to consider are that uh, you need the helmet to have cooldown reduction, HP and then good counter attack damage bonus and uh, after that uh, on the priority list is armor. So now that uh, the Forges update increased the counter attack damage, armors can get twice the counter attack damage than before. Good example is this boot. Those boots can go up to 1600 counter attack damage I believe. The old boots could get all the way to like 800. So that's twice the increase. Axes can go up to like 1000 before but now axes can go up to like 1600 I can show you one like that but uh, I've seen it uh, so axes can go up to 1600 counter attack damage when they're green uh, 
then rings uh, used to be able to go to around uh, 400 counterattack damage now they can go around 800 again i cannot show you oh look at that this ring can go up to 918 so maybe rings used to be able to go close to like 400 and something so yeah twice the increase on on armors and rings and amulets just taxes are getting like 60% ish increase that means you can get a ton of more uh, counter attack damage and this build gets much stronger now with uh, the forges update so uh, let's talk more about what's important for the other pieces of equipment on the armor and the legs you want to be prioritizing counter attack damage and HP and uh, high armor uh, is uh, the second priority now things like health regeneration are always nice uh, on any piece of equipment but don't make it the main priority things like resistance to damage over time the same applies to that and wood quality for some pieces of equipment you would really want to avoid it because uh, 30 30 something percent is not going to give you that much of a difference of course if it's 10 pieces of uh, like 30 you do get like 300 ish but uh, if it's a pushing set i'd suggest try and get something other even energy might be better it's up to you what you prefer um, but prioritize the hp and counter attack damage and on second place the armor those are the three things you really want uh, to to get in every piece of equipment when it comes to bracers it's a little bit different story and uh, when it comes to boots uh, there's movement speed so on the boots you want the movement speed uh, as uh, as a secondary priority it's not a must have but it's nice to have it still prioritize counter attack damage and hp first armor movement speed second and back to the bracers the bracers are the only armor uh, piece that can give you damage and crit damage and damage over time which you want to avoid for this build so ideally uh, you would have something with crit damage damage counter attack damage hp armor and uh probably something like uh, i don't know you don't need damage over time so something like health regeneration or energy or the resistance to damage over time um, anything other than damage over time would be fine of course damage over time is good for the grimnir set but it's not a must have so you could take it but i mean what i've got right now is not that bad it's okay i mean probably probably maybe works fine for certain sets but not for that one not for the challenge one so this is close to perfect row and if you have to decide do i want that 42 percent crit damage or do i want like uh, fat damage fat damage trumps crit damage if you have uh, two bracers one has crit damage the other one has fat damage pick the one with fat damage 42 crit damage is not that big of a difference knowing that with this build we are reaching uh, in the 2500 maybe close to 3000 uh, crit damage based on our counter attack so 42 crit damage shouldn't be priority uh, if it's like uh, if you're talking even red uh, red gauntlets with uh, with like 3000 damage instead of 6000 are still uh, gonna be trumping the crit damage roll so of course you want to have both of those in the end uh, when you start min maxing the stuff but prioritize the damage over the crits then on the rings and amulet you want uh, to, to have the following things uh, you want cooldown reduction you want crit chance you want fat damage a little bit of health drain really helps now but it's not a must have but i would still stay probably get health drain you would probably want hp so something like uh, crit damage is fine armor piercing is fine but i think you need to prioritize uh, cooldown reduction crit chance flat damage as the three top quality ones get a bit of hp as a secondary stat uh, health drain as a secondary priority and uh, uh, crit damage as well uh, as a secondary priority then the third priority would be uh, armor piercing uh, maybe something like that it, it depends i mean decide what you really want to focus on but but the main ones are the ones at the top here that you're seeing health drain is amazing so i think you should try and have at least one or two items with health drain now that it's added in the game uh now we're moving on to access access uh, 
again the same stuff you want to be prioritizing here cooldown reduction crit chance flat damage uh oh counter attack damage i forgot counter attack damage in the rings needs to be priority as well not the main priority like cooldown and crit chance and damage but uh, secondary priority along with hp and maybe health drain should be uh the counter attack damage on the axis you want cooldown reduction crit chance damage counter attack damage main priorities should be cooldown crit chance and damage even if you can get counter attack damage so counter attack damage and hp and health drain uh, secondary priority priority and uh, uh, crit damage should be uh, along with uh, armor piercing uh, okay to have but uh, not a must have wood quality uh, damage over time you might want to avoid things like those um, the same goes for the other axe as well and you want grudge holder uh, for the counter attack damage that uh, is 20 stacks of 500 up to um, 10,000 counter attack damage base which gets boosted by the percentages we've got from passives and then you want the ultimate carnage that uh, makes you take a little bit more damage when the rage is high but it also gives you up to 200 percent flat damage not crit damage flat damage this is why this axe trumps others like the like the ego axe uh, the bruised ego and um, things like uh, forge heart and heart seeker and uh, and the impatient one and whatever and you want a mountain pendant uh, and you want a fiery ring of tori for reducing the cooldowns hitting an enemy has a chance to reduce the current cooldown and grant energy performing a critical hit has a chance to reduce any current cooldowns stacking those together is amazing uh, old ring of resonance you really do want that and i did show uh, where to get it in the skills section segment if you missed it you can skip uh, you can go back to the skills segment and uh, check when i'm talking about the invasion tree and how to get ring of resonance it's an amazing synergy for this build and it's a must have so i think i pretty much covered everything if you're deciding whether you want something that gives you more hp or more armor uh, 310 armor equals uh, 2000 hp roughly so 620 armor is 4000 HP, that's kind of the mats you need to go after. I think still stacking more HP rather than armor would be better because with this build, you know, with Last Batch and Heroic we are bumping up the, X and the, the HP by 50% and more HP is amazing for this build. Uh, this was a very long segment so hopefully everything was clear, if you have any questions uh, ask them in the comments or find me on discord and ask there I will try to answer anything uh, if I'm not busy now I think it's uh, time to show you a little bit about the blessings so for the blessings uh, there's two blessing combinations you want one of them would be the HP armor damage reduction and I strongly suggest uh, going for the one that gives you more hp rather than more armor which is green blue green green blue green on both sides linked so you want to do this to make sure there's four links and you want the god token to be added here so you get 8000 hp per piece 620 armor and 2500 up to 2500 counter attack damage this you want in three pieces of equipment maybe four but i would suggest go for three pieces of equipment you don't want to get too much counter attack damage in the blessings because you're losing a lot of flat damage and without flat damage no matter how much crit damage you've got i ended up losing a lot of damage uh, when testing what's better and what isn't now the other option would be uh, first let me show you this is the DPS option you want that on the other seven pieces of equipment if you don't need that much damage this is the option that can give you the most flat damage by the way 4480 so if you want a more balanced version then you change up the other side and you're losing 2000 HP uh, you're losing uh, 420 damage 420 and you're winning uh, 2000 HP and if you want to go even further uh, on the HP side you do that then you're losing another uh, 420 damage and you're getting another uh, 2000 HP 
I personally prefer playing with the damage version, so I personally prefer it that way. And now let me show you a little bit of uh, gameplay footage uh, to top things off. So playing this build is not that difficult, it's just like the previous crit monster build from December. Basically you wanna be stacking that cooldown reduction and you wanna be stunning the enemies and if you have a uh, ring of resonance you're stunning uh, the enemy then you're causing it to bleed and the more bleeding enemies around you the more damage you do. And now something that I need to mention is the superior version of Call to Out no longer uh, does extra damage to stunned targets. But it still stuns. So you can still use it to stun if you don't have the, the Ring of Resonance farmed yet. Uh, I strongly suggest uh, once you get Ring of Resonance uh, you should definitely uh, use uh, Blood of the Mountain unless you're using the Grimnir set uh, where you would want to be using the heroic uh, code out. Blood of the Mountain gives you that 50% extra damage, it does uh, a ton of uh, damage over time if you keep the target inside it or the targets and basically the main thing about the build is jump, uh, use the dash out of danger but just keep jumping with the strike of the anvil and keep spamming that damage. Um, you can use the combo of um, jumping in then maybe increasing your HP and energy with uh, Was Bastion or just saving Was Bastion for later but Was Bastion also, also gives you damage. So uh, one combo I suggest is jump, Was Bastion, jump again, immortality, jump again and keep doing that. Another combo is j saving the, the healing of Was Bastion for when you need it and using the immortality when your HP is getting uh, low enough. So hope you enjoy playing it for sure. So if you need help, uh, hints, tips how to play this build or any of my other builds or any build in general on any character, feel free to hop over to my Twitch or YouTube channel. You can live chat with me, you can leave me a comment and I can uh, reply to that comment when I'm available. You can also find me on my Discord uh, server, uh, link in the description for that uh, and you can always uh, chat with me over there if you need some help with anything. If you enjoyed this video you could subscribe to my channel to get notified for more content updates for games like Chaos Bane, Torchlight 3, Wolves and Words of Mayhem or other similar uh, isometric booters or as well sometimes for Borderlands 3 content. Thanks for watching the video folks. Keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.